Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the one and only Dion from Dion Talk. How you doing, buddy? Howdy, doing great. Thank you for reaching out on this uh, alternate Saturday. There you go. Yeah, it's still every day is Saturday, except this Saturday we were enjoying Santa Barbara right on the water. So that was a lot of fun for us. Uh, one of the things I did is did a lot of reading because that's just what I do uh, and found an article with Grant Cardone where kind of most of the way through the article, he actually highlighted three reasons that average people fail. And I have to say, I agree with all three. Uh, we'll go through each one together. Agree or disagree, totally fine. Uh, but I want to wrap about each one individually because, again, I think, you know, I think these three things are roots of a lot of failure. And one of them is my weakest thing, which we'll, we will get to last. It happens to be number three. But number three is an area I struggle with. So I haven't seen the article. I have an opinion on why the average person fails. Okay. And without seeing the article, reading just your facial expression, I disagree with your number three. Ah, okay. I like this. This is good. This is good. All right. Well, let's get into it. Number one, why most people fail or the average person fails is discipline. Right. Uh, whether you want to lose weight, you want to save money, want to learn a new language, learn an instrument, wh whatever you want to do in life to be better, it takes work. It takes focus. It takes what I call daily discipline. Right. It, you know, some people talk about 2000 hours to perfect things, you know, all of these things. If you're in real estate or in stocks or any kind of investing. Most of you need to look in the mirror because you're not disciplined and that's, you know, you're. Uh, that's a problem, right? Even getting on this real estate journey, you and I both have told everybody the first three to five years suck. If you get into the year three and you got that $500 in cash flow, and then you go out and go, I deserve a new car, but it's only 300 bucks. You've gone backwards. Discipline matters. And uh, I think a lot of folks uh, don't appreciate that. What do you think about number one? So I think the problem with discipline is anytime you bring it up, you, uh, a lot of people immediately go to stoicism. They think I need to be rigid. I need to have a, this, this plan and stick to it and don't make any alterations. And so I agree discipline is a problem, but it's, it, my take is a little different. I think one of the reasons that engineers do so well in real estate is because you structure out a plan. You have to think long-term, plan short-term to get there. That's real estate. The next great investors in real estate are going to be gamers people well, who grew up in the last 15 people who grew up in the last 15 years like millennial mike playing world of warcraft where okay. you could spend hours or weeks pursuing something that really makes a tiny change in your gaming experience and when you start any of those kind of games this will be nerd talk that might not work for you but you think of where you want your character in the game to end up and then you build a path to get there. Even if the path is boring, even if the path is a grind, they literally call it grinding. That's what, mm. that's what gamers call it. That's real estate. Those first four or five years is a grind. Nothing big changes. You're doing constant small work for a goal that you can't see that's still five to 10 years away. But you engineers, great for that. And now gamers are going to be doing really well with it. I like that. That's exactly, I get it. I've never played, I don't play games. I don't. I haven't played a video game and really played a video game ever. I mean, I put a couple of quarters in machines and. Well, now you have a couple of days off every week. Maybe you can try. Yeah. <laughs> no, no gaming consoles coming to my house. No. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, I like that. Cause that's exactly, if you're conditioned to appreciate what is coming, but will grind to use the vernacular, that's exactly right. And um you know, however, however you get that, if it's the experience of playing these games, great. If it's, you know, going back and remembering how you learned a second language or playing an instrument or whatever it is, it takes repetition. It takes learning. It, it's just, I think the grind is a great example. So yeah, I, I would want to tell you that I, I see a lot of people fail um, because lack of discipline. Um, you know, I like that. Look for the vision, the top, but execute daily. So uh, you want to close that number one out? Um, I'm hoping that people could take away when you hear the word discipline, don't get turned off by thinking that stoicism. Like you just need to be really disciplined, like a, a Marine standing in their dress blues. No, stick to your plan. Come up with a plan. 
be ready to change your plan, have the discipline to have a plan, but know your plan might shift. Absolutely. So number two, uh, this is a big deal, I think, for a lot of people. Might even be more important than number one, and that is patience. We live in a microwave society. We want it tomorrow. And I got bad news for you. If you're in the real estate game, it's not tomorrow. This Wealth is built over years and decades and consistency. So, so patience um, is something that I think, you know, everybody wants it yesterday. I love the reference of the microwave society um, being a bachelor who only eats out. I think I have a stove. But... <laughs> Not sure it works. Right. Uh, the We talked the first four or five years, maybe six, if you had started out with debt like I did. Um, when people talk about they don't believe that I'm lazy, I reference the fact that in the first two years, all I did was save a down payment for that first house hack. For two years, I saved the down payment for the first investment property. Four years in, I did two things. I mean, yes, it was daily discipline to learn my market, learn cash on cash, find a good deal, all that little stuff like that. But what did I actually do as far as investing goes? Mm -hmm. Two transactions. That took patience. Those four years suck. Like you're, you're like, I'm working every day. I'm not seeing any changes. I, I could see the plan. It's mentally there. Um, yeah. yeah, that was challenging. So I'm hoping people understand, especially when they're watching content like this and they're getting that first deal or the first couple of deals, nothing seems big. The cash flow from one property that's maybe four or $500 a month doesn't seem life-changing. But add time to that with your patience. You might add one or two deals that triple that and then appreciation, principal pay down, mortgages stay the same, rents go up. Like all of those things start kicking in in years, not months. It is absolutely life-changing. All right, number three, we'll see how you did. Number three for Mr. Grant Cardone. Again, number one was discipline. Number two is patience. Number three, gonna are you going to write? No, I was going to, but I, I'll just go say ahead. it first. I okay, think it's not thinking big. <laughs> yes. Okay. Not no, thinking no, I big enough. I watched your daily update and it was like at the end in the last couple of minutes, you you yeah. talked about one of your mistakes is not thinking big. So I, I pieced it together. I, I, yeah. I didn't, you know, absolutely yeah. disagree. Well, because again, I, um, I've never, I don't think I've really ever thought big. Right. Um, I, 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 in, Again, it's a weakness and maybe it's because I don't know how to do it. Maybe I'm not comfortable. Maybe I, I don't know that I've ever given myself permission to think big. Uh, I just get comfortable doing. I like to work, right? Or focus. The, the daily discipline is, I just call myself a hammer, right? I just keep swinging the damn hammer. Um, but yeah, please tell me why you disagree. I, I'd love to hear this. So I, I like the idea of 10X, like Grant Cardone's. I mean, I kind of can also piece that together. If you shoot for the stars, at least you land on the moon kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Your goals need to be achievable. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why one rental at a time works. One of the many reasons get to four. We're not talking about get to 200 or get to 135. Um, you can. And if you think bigger, you're more likely to get there. <laughs> I just can't put it into words how it feels like I won the lottery by thinking <clears throat> I need passive income to make work optional and then getting to about triple that. So I'm not making $50,000 a month. I'm making over $15,000 a month without having to get out of bed. Uh, I'm not thinking billionaire. I'm not thinking um, everything Grant Cardone. You know, when I started listening to him four years ago, we had like 8,000 units and it's just this big thing. When I, when I watch and I learn from one rental at a time and a lumberjack landlord and even millennial Mike going, Hey, I'm going to grow this big portfolio. Not my goal. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying it was right or wrong. Figure out yeah, what your yeah, goal yeah. is. Uh, if, if I was 25 or 30 and I really wanted to still just tackle life and take it on. I mean, I grew a truck driving school and, and took it from, you know, a profit of like 60,000 a year to, into the millions. Right. I was growing at that point in life grew someone else's dream instead of my own. But financial freedom for me was financial freedom, not massive thinking yeah. bigger. So when I heard you say that this morning, I thought for, and that's the important thing is what is your goal mm -hmm. and where are you at in your journey uh, on, on whether you want 
massive growth or just freedom. Because some people, I, I have a, a friend who is a music teacher and, and they just don't make a lot of money. So he is pursuing financial freedom so he could teach music. Mm-hmm. So the money doesn't matter. Like to me, that that's the same as my goal of I want to do nothing. <laughs> and this was the path to that. Yeah, for me, it's kind of the similar, right? I got to a point on the wealth scale or income or whatever, whatever that thing is. And I'm sitting on the ledge kind of looking out, right? I, I mean, could I go higher? Sure. Do I have any desire to go higher? Nope. Right. Not, not, not that's, I got where I am. Uh, I'm comfortable and, and um, I guess I have to tell myself it's okay. Right. Cause again, a type a, I'm a commission-based salesperson for 30 years. I had quota around my neck forever. I could be fired in a heartbeat for not performance. So maybe it's part of my mashing together of my old ego of being the best of the best with my current comfort that maybe I struggle with. Maybe, I don't know. My main takeaway from watching people like Grant Cardone and Graham Stephan and meet mm-hmm. Kevin that are very different. They invested very differently, but Graham Stephan and meet Kevin became very big on YouTube and are making a lot of money there. If you think really big, you need to take really big risks. Mm. In 2008 to 2011, you, I don't think, were thinking, if I had invested in Amazon in 98 or 2001, right now I would have $2 million and now you'd have $20 million, right? Mm. Who would hold it that long? Um, the how many stocks are down over 20% or fit the top five are down over 50% year over year. The, the Alex just did a video on that. Um, those huge risks mentally sound great. Like the person who bought Bitcoin at $2 a coin and put $100,000 into it sounds great. But to, to risk that, okay, right now I want somebody to take $100,000 and go buy Shiba Inu and yeah. just wait for it to hit a dollar. Yeah. that's a big risk. That's thinking huge. That's you'd be billionaire pride. I'm not going to do the math because I'm not good at it, but you'd have a lot more money, right? Or you'd be out a hundred thousand dollars instead take the hundred thousand dollars buy a fourplex as a house hack or a duplex as an investment, create a little more cash flow every month, get appreciation, principal pay down the tax benefits. I'm not thinking big, like the next crypto King or, and it could be stocks. It could be starting and growing a business for me. I'm thinking small. One mm-hmm. rental at a time and consistent. Yeah, I, I like how you kind of frame this because again, I think again, for most people, I don't know what most is, call it 80%. One rental at a time is the right answer, right? Get to four. If you really like it, get to 10. You're done at 16. You probably could have been done at 12. That's a great life. It's okay. It's it's a phenomenal life. It's in a life that most of us would desire. You don't have to have a hundred. That's why. I so rarely talk about our portfolio because it's not that number. It's freedom. If you can get, you know, four changes your life. It's been proven time and time again. Uh, you get to 10, even if it takes 10, even if it's one a year, even if you have to do the four, three, two, one strategy, it's an amazing, it's amazing thing. So um, I love this again, all credit to a grant. I think it was in jet set magazine. I, I got a link for some reason. Uh, discipline, patient, not thinking big enough. Certainly number one and number two. Dion is giving me something to think about in number three. Dion, where can people find you? Mm-hmm. One last thought as we land the plane. And I think there's an economy of scale here mm. that if you're not thinking big enough to get a rental, if you're just thinking paycheck to retirement account and that's as big as you're thinking, then Grant's definitely got a point. Yes. I agree. And you can find me right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. Thank you, buddy.